Hi everybody, my name is Greg Anderson and this is the Good Timekeeping Show with Greg Anderson. Today I want to show you how to read a Geochron. And these instructions will apply to the digital Geochron like I'm showing you now, or the mechanical Geochron. Some of the features are exactly the same, so that's what I'm going to focus on now. Of course, at a glance, the Geochron is a nice, lovely map of the world, but if you look a little bit closer, you'll find that it is loaded with information. The first thing you want to observe is the time scale up across the top of the display. So you see, right there in the middle would be 12 noon, and that 12 in the circle represents the part closest to where the sun would be uh, most directly above the, the surface of the Earth. So middle of the day, uh, solar noon, right there close to that noon mark. Then there's a row of numbers up above that are one hour ahead. So those would represent uh, daylight saving time, summertime, uh, so any place in those time zones where they're having daylight saving time, that's where you would uh, adjust the, the hour ahead by one. So on the left of that 12 o'clock noon position will be all the uh, morning hours, and on the right would be all the uh, afternoon and evening hours. Now just under that time scale, you're going to see some tabs indicating the different time zones. So in this display right now, you see V, U, T, S, R, Q, P, etc. And so those are the different time zones. And as you scroll down, uh, look on the map, you can see letters on the map indicating which time zone corresponds to uh, the tabs on, on the top of the map. So for example, the Eastern time zone in the United States corresponds to time zone R. The Atlantic time zone would be time zone Q, but that also takes in parts of South America in time zone Q. You can see that a major part of Brazil would be time zone P. So as I then go back up and look at the time scale and see those tabs up there, I can see that it's approaching noon in that eastern time zone. However, Right now, this time of year, it's also daylight saving time in the eastern time zone of the United States. So I would use that upper number and say that right now, it's about 20 minutes before one o'clock daylight time for the eastern time zone. So meanwhile, the, the Q time zone down there in South America, let's say Bolivia, you know, right there, then that is the Q time zone and that is approaching one o'clock as well, about 20 minutes to one o'clock, not with daylight saving time. So we would use the standard time uh, designation right there. The number in the circle is the number one for the Q time zone. And then again for P, it's coming up on two o'clock in the afternoon, and that would cover uh, major parts of Brazil, including Sao Paulo. So with either the Geochron mechanical or digital versions, you would look on the map and find the time zone for the city or the country that you're interested in. And then you just follow the tabs up to the top and find out what time it is corresponding to that time zone based on the tab. So if we get in here nice and close, you can see that there are five minute markers between each hour. So right now let's concentrate on that R time zone again. So it's uh, somewhere between 11 and 12 standard time, somewhere between 12 and 1 daylight time. And so if I just count uh, the, little, the little hash marks there, you know, 5, 10, 15, right? 20, 25, 30, 30, 35, and we're just about uh, almost at 45. So I can look at my watch and I can see that it's uh, 43 minutes past the hour in my time zone. And so that's why the little R is almost at the 45 mark there. So if you just look at those, those tabs up at the top, you can get a pretty good idea of the time to the closest five minutes. Every Geochron, whether it's the mechanical or digital version, will have this little indicator uh, on either side of the international dateline to tell you what day of the week it is. So again, on the right side, it's Thursday. On the left side, it's Friday right now. And each Geochron is going to show you the analemma. Now with the digital version, you have the option of turning off the analemma and making it not visible on the map. On the mechanical version, it's always there. So that basically shows you the natural track of the sun. So right now there's kind of a little bright spot where the sun would be most directly over that part of the earth right now. And then it follows a track around that kind of figure eight. We're approaching 
the longest day of the year, as they say, in the Northern Hemisphere, where the sun reaches its highest point. And so then that little sun icon is going to reach the top of that figure eight. And then it's going to slowly, over the next six months, wind its way back down to the bottom of that figure eight, where the sun would reach its most southern point in the sky somewhere around the last part of December. And then, of course, one of the neatest features of the Geochron is the Terminator line. So you'll see this on both the digital and the analog version. With the digital version, you can make some adjustments to that Terminator line, make it uh, more soft or more of a hard line like this. You can make it... Uh, be not quite as much of a contrast between the light and the dark, but this is basically what it's going to look like on your mechanical Geochron. So I've set up this digital Geochron to emulate that look. That line right there, you can see on the right side of the dark line, uh, it would be nighttime in that part of the world right now. And on the other side, the left side, it would be daylight approaching nighttime on that side of the world. The view is a bit more dramatic and uh, fun to look at for me when you can see the entire world at a glance and see where it's nighttime and uh, where it's daylight at any part of the world right now. Or as Patrick from Geocrine likes to say, it's time everywhere. Now with this particular model, the Geochron Atlas, the 4K digital device, you have the date down there in the lower right part of the screen. On the mechanical Geochron, there's a date scale down uh, outside of the map portion uh, along the frame, the bottom left side of the Geochron. And that's where you, you use this to set the time on the mechanical Geochron. And that shows you the date right there, including what is the date on the left side of the international date line and what is the date on the right side of the international date line. On this digital Geochron, I've chosen to display hours, minutes, and seconds, both of my local time zone and UTC. And so that shows up on the lower left uh, corner of the map. Whereas with some versions of the mechanical Geochron, there's a little time scale up above, again, outside of the map area uh, on the top right side, a little time scale to show you more precisely the, the minutes indicator. So you're not relying completely on those five minute hash marks along the, the time scale on the top edge of the map. As far as the time scale goes, you can see that at the right edge, it's got midnight and a little bit beyond midnight, a couple hours beyond midnight there, almost two full hours. And then on the left edge, it also shows a little bit beyond midnight uh, going the opposite direction. So there's a little bit of redundancy on the map and that's not bad. It makes for the Terminator line to look like it's got a couple of humps on the end and, you know, depending on the time of the year. And so, and that's okay. I, I kind of like it. I can see Perth twice on this map. I can see Mount Everest twice on this map right now, but I get the idea. I've always been somewhat interested in geography, but it makes it even more interesting to have a Geochron to help me out. Here I'm learning all kinds of things I hadn't really considered before. Uh, for example, the Z time zone for zero hour or Zulu hour, you can see the prime meridian line runs right down the middle of that Z time zone. And so it's fun to learn about all the different time zones in other parts of the world. There are some little uh, you know, unusual time zones here and there. For example, the letter N time zone doesn't have a lot of population that live in that time zone, but you can see those little boxes right in between O and Z for, uh, well, the Cape Verde Islands, the, what is it, the Azores? Yeah, I'm learning a lot about uh, geography by, by looking at uh, all these interesting places. And I've put a lot of custom points on this digital map so I can, you know, get a better idea of some cities I've heard of, but I wasn't exactly sure where they were before. Maybe some that are in the news, whatever. I can just uh, create a little custom pin to put on my Geochron and that's fun to see where those places are and what time of day it is there. The Geochron map also indicates here there's a little time zone for these sets of islands. It's W plus 30. So the W time zone would normally be like the time in Hawaii, but here's a little set of islands uh, to the southeast of Hawaii where they're just 30 minutes ahead of Hawaii. And then that one strange place where the, the international date line kind of juts out to, to, the, uh, to the east for that one little section there, you can see that they're in time zone M plus two hours. They've decided that they wanted those islands to be uh, the place where it becomes a new day sooner than anywhere else on the earth. So they've changed the international date line not too many years ago to reflect that. And even though it's uh, time zone M, which is a couple hours to the west of Hawaii, they're going to stay on time zone M plus two hours. So 
what it means is in this little place where it's time zone M, it is the same time of day as Hawaii, except it's the next day. So it's interesting to be able to look at the map and, and learn those little quirks of uh, how time is kept all around the world. So there you go. Thanks for watching. I'm still very enthusiastic about the Geochron. If you decide to buy one, hey, tell Patrick I sent you, but you know, I don't, or, or don't. I really, I get nothing from Geochron other than the thrill of being a fan and knowing that uh, if there's anyone out there who's interested in Geochrons, I would like to point you in the right direction so you can get either the mechanical uh, or the digital one, whichever you like. I like them, so uh, I wanted to tell you as much as I could about them. And that is the point of this episode of The Good Timekeeping Show. I hope you'll stay tuned for other uh, episodes about timekeeping coming up real soon.